Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to install the A17 experimental dedicated server using Steam. You go to your tools menu, and you get there, click properties, and you go to beta, and then you select opt in or opt out. You go to latest experimental, click close, double click to install, select your folder, whatever you want here, click next, and give it a few minutes to finish downloading. And you can use this on any Windows system that you're using, your home computer, or if you're renting an actual dedicated server, VPS, it doesn't matter. If it's Windows, it'll work. Make sure if you're not using your own computer, you log out of your Steam account. You have to use your own Steam account, so you might have to verify. Be ready to grab a code from your email. And navigate to where it is, Steam folder. Steam apps, and then you got the common folder. And there it is. All you have to do is copy it. Do not cut it. Just copy and paste it to your desktop or wherever you're going to put it. You want to keep that other file there. This way, when you update later, you don't erase your whole server. Always do it separately. Now we're going to get the mods folder. I use the Botman Server Manager so I can get it from the website www.botman.nz as you can see go to downloads and there it is whichever ones you want to use or you can also go to the forums on the seven days to that website he has an updated link and i'm showing you right here just download it once it's done downloading you can just copy and paste it to whatever system you're using if it's off-site and not at your house like mine. I use a remote desktop connection for this. Easy peasy. Okay, let's take a look at your configuration. It's all standard stuff. You got your server port. Set that. The server port is going to be the start of your port range. You got your control panel port. I don't use this at all. But I set it anyways just in case. And it's always 4. And the Telnet port is always a 2. I keep them all to a piece. Add a complicated password. Numbers, letters, capitals. Doesn't like symbols too much. And I believe anything over 16 characters, it flips out. Alright. Um, let's see here. We got your server name. We'll just give it a generic name, server test, since I'm doing this exclusively for this video. You can have as many players as you want, as long as you got the hardware and the network to support it. I don't recommend going over 20 players, it gets kind of funky after that. There's ways you can get it done, but... Not really worth it unless you got got the system to back it up. The largest map size we can currently get is 8192. That's what I've gathered from the forums. You got a bunch of new settings here. And I set this up to be a fairly hard server. All right, so now um, we got, let's see here, server admin file name. We want to keep this one name, test server. We're going to use that exact same name for a couple other things I'll show you later on in this video. Let's go through a couple more of the settings on how I like to set up my servers. Well, the hard ones anyways. Okay, for the save game folder, you have to get rid of those two lines and the exclamation mark. 
And those ones right there, there's two. Now we need to create a new folder inside the same directory. Just call it saves all lowercase. Then open it and grab the directory, copy it. You're going to need to put that in your new configuration file right where it says absolute path. This is where the game will save to. Your admin file and maps will all be in there. This way they don't get lost somewhere on the computer and you have to go dig it around. That's very annoying. This is the best way to do it and the easiest. Okay, this is a start dedicated file, but it has a custom code that was provided by Smegs. He created it from, I don't know where he did it, but I use it. And it will bring the server back up as soon as it stops, so it works with the bot. It works extremely well. You don't need the bot or anything. You can use the file anywhere you want. It will just bring the server back up. Okay, you see how I changed the .exe to test server and the underscore data as well. You need to do that, especially when you want to have more than one server on the same machine. That helps a lot. Okay, it's got the mods folder, copy, and just paste it right in there. Now we'll add uh, the start dedicated batch with the auto restart on it. I'll leave a link in the description. Or better yet, I'll just leave the text so you can copy and paste it. That'll be easier. And then you got to change the name here, where it says Echo Starting. That's what will uh, show the name that's starting up. You got multiple. And you just rename it to the .exe, save it. Easy peasy. I also recommend getting a text file ready for your port ranges. It will help you later when you're setting up the port forwarding in the Windows firewall. So the game ports will be a range of 7 as you can see there. Do it like that. Okay, so the port range will be 26.9.10 to 26.9.17. That's a hyphen in between there. You're going to need that. It'll make it easier when you're doing a port forwarding in the Windows firewall. This is just basic information, what I use later, it helps me, so I don't have to keep going back to the server config file to get this information. It's in one easy, convenient place. Those are the port ranges. Like I said, that's going to help you later for the Windows firewall. Make sure you got your Telnet port. You can see right here, I'm going to grab the Telnet port, just copy that. And this is what they'll be asking for server managers. This is what you use, the information you give, the Telnet port and the password. That's what you need to hook up server managers, whether it's the Botman server manager or whatever else is out there. They use a Telnet port. And these are the ports you're going to have to open so people can connect and Server managers can communicate with your server, giving you control. All right, let's do the Windows Firewall now. We're going to do the inbound rules first. Click inbound, new rules. And this is where the port ranges, I told you. You just copy and paste them in. 
just like that. You allow. Leave those in the description there so you know which it is, which ports they are. If you have multiple, it helps if you label it at the start if you're planning on more than one. That's TCP in. We'll do that UDP in. I do TCP and UDP. Because the report range, I only have to do it once per rather than each individual port. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll leave it going so you guys can see exactly how it's done with a visual reference. That's going to help you guys a lot more than a bunch of text with you guys sitting there scratch your head. Hmm, what's that? Okay, here's the program one. You have to do this. Browse to .exe, wherever it is that you got it installed. you got to find it because you need to allow this as well. If you don't do it this way, people won't be able to connect. Some funky stuff happens. But this is the easiest way to do it. And it's better than using Windows to automatically allow it because that leaves too many ports open. So this way it's very specific. There you go, a lot of connection, easy peasy. Let's make sure you label it nicely so you know what it is in the firewall so you can get rid of it later. Don't want to leave ports open. Now we'll do the outbound, and it's the exact same thing, just that it's outbound, TCP and UDP. Now always label it, whether it's in or out, TCP or UDP. Makes it a heck of a lot easier when you're running multiple servers. I learned this over time. I made a lot of mistakes doing this. I used to do this one by one. Just to set up a server would take a long time. But that's a lot of ports to open or doing a one by one. Until I learned that little trick. Yeah, that's what the auto restart batch file looks like. I'll post that in the description. Okay, open your task manager. And we'll start up the server. That's what you'll see. That opens up. That's from the batch file. That must remain open. For this patch, it takes a fair bit for it to fire up the first time. And it gets really, really heavy on the CPU for the first time only. Like this is a six core system, so it gets up there pretty high. So if you're running multiple servers, you want to make sure that you got these setups done and those maps generated. You don't want to be doing this while you got other servers on the system. Because this will lag out the entire system because it's using so much. Thankfully, it's very brief. And once it finally calms down, it takes a good, uh, I'll give it five, maybe ten minutes, depending on the speed of your system. Okay, now I'll show you guys how to do the admin file and how to find your Steam64 ID. Let's go to your profile, or whoever's profile it is, right click, copy the page, go to Steam IO, paste it in, go to lookup, boom, there it is, Steam 64 ID. That's your that's what you need for the admin file. That's how you ban people or add admins.
All right, let's get the uh, admin file set up. It's pretty easy. Just look at what I'm doing. Copy and paste that. If you got one person or ten people, it doesn't matter. Just do one for each. And for each of them, you go to Steam.io and get their Steam64 ID and just replace the numbers. Three different main ranks. Zero is the owner. You got one as your main admins. They have debug menu and creative menu, if that's what you grant them. Two is a mod. They can just have debug menu fly around, do stuff like that. All right, so finally the server is almost ready. It takes it a while. When it's under, under 1%, it's typically about ready to go. We'll do the first time login, see if the server's up. And remember, this can be done on any Windows system. doesn't matter what it is. This will work. For the experimental version, this is the easiest way to do it. You don't need Steam CMD. I use that a lot, but it's a, it's a big hassle when it comes to the experimental versions. Just type in your IP and port manually for the first time, It'll be quicker. And there you go. Logging in. Takes it a while to load load up the first time as well. This took about three to five minutes. Some people might be quicker, might be longer, depending on the speed of your computer. If you're on a potato, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let's test it. F1 to open a console menu and the most important command you're ever going to have is SA that will save the map. If you're not using a server manager you need to use that all the time. Otherwise the server crashes, restarts and you don't do that and you don't have a server manager everything's gone. At least that's how it was in A16. Maybe it's changed here but just in case so the admin file is working, as you can see, I'm a rocket launcher and I'm going to go blow some stuff up. Well, I hope this video helped you guys out a lot. If you guys liked it, subscribe if you want, whatever. Doesn't really matter to me. I'm not in it for the views or anything like that, at least not currently. <laughs> if you like this video, let me know. And if you want me to do other videos like this, I will do them. Thanks a lot for watching, and hello from Canada!